It's time for another death battle! Let's head to some of them, bitches. Yeah. Let's get this on, shall we? Matter of fact, let me fix the camera, because I feel like the camera's been off recently. There we go. I believe that is better. If not, I will make another adjustment. Let's get this death battle on. Beast! Versus Goliath. I got my, my, my money on Beast just because Beast is all I know. So go Beast. Let's do this. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> Some of the greatest heroes of all are shunned by the very people they continue to protect. Basically the worst deal ever. Like Beast, the blue genius of the X-Men, and Goliath, the gargoyle who gives new meaning to the phrase tough as stone. Yeah, he's he's hurt. Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze the weapon, armor, and skills to find out who would win uh, a death battle. Damn. Uh. Mutation. The key to evolution. The process is slow, normally taking thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. If that means we're all eventually By the way, for all y'all harassing me men, count me about out. Team Four Fear Star, normal people, mutants generally I will do all of them. I already told y'all that. So people. just be patient. Not so for Hank McCoy. Yeah, the instant he popped out, it was pretty clear that something was different about him. Namely, the giant monkey hands and feet. <laughs> that must have been rough on the way out. He better give <laughs> dear old mom double the presents on Mother's Day. Though Hank successfully hid his mutation from the world throughout his adolescent life, he was eventually discovered and shunned. Constantly harassed and eventually kicked out of his own school, he was left to wallow in loneliness. Until good old Wheels showed up and offered him a place on the mutant group known as the X-Men. Hank took on the nickname that was previously used to degrade him and transformed it into something new. His code name, The Beast. That looks cool. What was that from? As an X-Man, Beast became an integral member of this uncanny team. His superhuman strength, speed, and durability let him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with baddies like the immovable Blob and Kraven the Hunter. But Beast was a genius, like yours truly, and quickly completed his doctoral studies. Eventually leaving the X-Men, he became a leading researcher in mutant genetics. Desperate to cure the mutant phenomenon, Beast developed a serum which he theorized would temporarily counteract the mutated genes in his body. Except it kind of did the opposite. Poor guy, now he truly was a beast. This transformation wasn't all right, though. Guy. Fuzzy Beast could now lift over 10 tons, run over 40 miles per hour, and jump over 25 feet in the air. He also had a wicked healing factor which made him essentially bulletproof. But this was nerfed dramatically from healing instantaneously to over a couple of hours when Quasimodo's experiments turned him blue. For a scientific genius, Steve never did quite figure out how to turn back to his old self. I mean, he's been able to turn into a cat man, a horse man, blue Kelsey Grammer, and even Sasquatch. Somehow, he always ends up as his classic blue ape self. Now unable to hide in plain sight, Beast had little choice but to return to the X-Men as a teacher and a leader. As my research makes evident, it is possible to enhance the intelligence of Mollusca cephalopoda, such as the squid, to the same level as that of the average human. Even a little... What is this? I'm afraid... How do you know I what this is? I've never so seen this before. My new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. <laughs> this is all Japanese anime. I want to see this. <laughs> Beast isn't just a genius, he's also a ridiculously strong fighter. He has survived hits from the juggernaut, smashed open a tank with his bare fists, hit the ground with a punch so hard he created an earth-shattering shockwave, and lifted a solid gold oak tree. A cubic That's foot of gold weighs heavy. approximately one ton. Comparing yeah. the diameter of the tree to Hank's height, it's reasonable to believe that this golden tree weighs at least 60 tons. Or a ship ton, to be precise. Despite his athletic skill and enormous strength, Beast is a pacifist, preferring diplomacy over fisticuffs. He is rarely eager to enter a fight. In combat, he usually relies on his teammates to throw punches while he holds back to come up with game-winning strategies using his brilliant mind. Like the time he figured out how to use Juggernaut's own bulk against him. As Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, 
you freak out. But when he gets angry, he'll enter a rage which makes him so uncontrollably fierce, he's a danger even to his closest friends, literally unleashing the beast within. Beast's monstrous appearance remained a permanent part of his life. He was never truly accepted by society, and even had to leave the woman he loved for fear she would become a target of mutant haters. But if he could have his way, he would spend his days hanging from the ceiling with a nice cup of tea reading Shakespeare. But we don't always get what we want, so he'll have to settle for kicking ass. With pink heart averted feet and many a tear, in our opposing path to persevere. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. One thousand years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. And badass cartoon intros! Stone by day, warriors by night, gargoyles used to be common throughout the world. Like the stone statues they inspired, gargoyles were known as protectors. Guarding their home and those inside was always their top priority. It's not every day your garden statue is also your top built bodyguard. Otherwise, I'd have a shitload more long gnomes. In the year 994 AD, a clan of gargoyles formed a symbiotic relationship with the humans of a Scottish castle. Using their superhuman strength, keen senses, and warrior spirit, the gargoyles defended the castle from invaders at night. In return, their human allies would watch over them during the day when they are most vulnerable, as gargoyles turn to solid stone in daylight. The gargoyles were led by Goliath, a creature with a voice so sexy it makes humans turn to stone, if you know what I'm saying. You are trespassing. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to their beastly appearance, Goliath's clan eventually faced unjust prejudice from the very humans under their protection. We are most seriously displeased to allow beasts in the dining hall. These are unnatural creatures. No good can come from associating with them. If that wasn't bad enough, Goliath was betrayed by his closest human friend, causing nearly his entire clan to be smashed to bits. Then the few that did survive were magically sealed in stone forever by a misinformed wizard. Talk about a shitty Monday. Sealed in stone forever, or until one very specific, seemingly impossible criteria was met. The terms of the spell were that they would sleep until the castle rises above the clouds. And when he says above the clouds, he means it literally. So, stone they remain for a thousand years until in 1994. Some billionaire with a name that sounds like an antidepressant just happened to be crazy enough to try something. Xanatos moved every last stone of the ancient castle to the top of his New York skyscraper, which happened to poke above the clouds. See, I never really Most watched the series. Been astronomical. Don't disappoint me. Giant skyscrapers from ground level without breaking a sweat. 
Goliath is strong enough to lift a car, create a small earthquake, and tear through steel with his bare claws like it was wet paper. He's fast enough to keep pace with foes who use rocket-powered flight, and he's tough enough to survive a fall over 100 feet. He was even able to keep gliding after being shot by a Nazi plane's Glide. machine gun while fighting in World War II. He traveled through time. It was weird. Goliath may look like a brutal monster, and he certainly can be when he goes into a rage. However, he's actually rather clever and wise. He was able to outsmart Oberon, who is practically an all-powerful magical god. And when Goliath's not leading his clan into battle or struggling to have a relationship with a human detective... Boundaries! Yeah. He's usually holed up in his castle's library, reading. Wise and powerful, Goliath is a true force of nature. For 12 hours of the day, Right, the other 12, he's a motionless stone statue, making him a pretty easy target. Even when he's awake, Goliath often puts himself in danger for the sake of others, regardless of the risk. Hey, he's managed to survive for over a thousand years, and believe me when I say, you do not want to be on this gargoyle's bad side. My name is Goliath, and I belong to no one. Stop whining. A gargoyle doesn't whine. He roars! Okay, made quick work of that, didn't he? All right, the commands are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! I see, uh, Beast winning, still. But we'll see. They're now these death battles are going to go.
What's his name? Is it Snake or something? Or... Solid Snake. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ben, I play Wiz. And I'm Chad, and I play Boomstick. And uh, <laughs> next time on Death Battle, Solid Snake. We've had Snake requested over and over and over again for years, and actually... It's my first time seeing what the fuck they so actually look like. Fighting, make sure you go follow us on our social media. So that's at ScrewAttack on Twitter or Facebook.com forward slash official SA because we'll be announcing his combatant very soon. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the latest Game Overthinker and the latest Desk of Death Battle, which is all about how Tony Stark's brain tumor once saved the world. It's absolutely ridiculous. You need to go watch it. Thank mm. you guys so much for watching Death Battle. Alright, I will. The episode. If you did, make sure you click like, subscribe, and tell your friends about it. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs> Post all your comments down below. Let me know what y'all thought. I I don't know. I I guess I don't know. I guess look. I don't know enough about Beast or the Gargoyle Goliath to know who should have won. Like I said, I just went with Beast because that's all I know is Beast. All right. If you enjoyed my reaction, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. If you did not, you don't know good entertainment. One million subscribers. Woo!